Hello everyone, welcome to the last video on my making an 1840s dress series. The previous videos were about making the petticoats and the bodice, I will link them down below. I've also made a playlist if you want to go and revisit the other videos. In this one, I will be working on the skirt and the flower decorations. For the skirt, I decided to simply go with the rectangle and pleat it at the top. I'm always really scared of cutting a skirt too short, so usually I use the full width of the fabric, try it on, trim and hem. So here you can see me pleating the salvage edge with the fork method. This works really great. I also made a small paper template for the spacing between the pleats. I don't think I do pleats properly, so here I leave a few inches in between each and then drag the fold so that on the outside it just looks like a half an inch pleat, but there is a lot more fabric hidden in there. I ended up using about 4 meters of this Duchess satin, which I regret. I think it is too much volume of this particular fabric, and the satin is very heavy, and I feel like it oppresses the petticoats a bit in the end. But I only realised that after making it. I also counted up the pleats to make sure I had the same number on each side of the centre front. I left about a 10 inch gap at the centre front. Then I went ahead and basted all the pleats. I also basted up the back seam, leaving a 10 inch gap at the top, and sewed it by machine. I then added some placards to the gap at the top, so that the closure was a bit smoother. This is achieved by adding placards to both sides of the seam, and then when they overlap, it will be along the seam line. I sew this down by hand. Then I flat filled the back seam. I trimmed away one half the seam allowance and folded the other half over, then hand sewed it down. Then I wasn't sure what to do for the overlay. I tried gathering it down, but I didn't like it. I put it on my dress form and marked the desired length, and then trimmed it off with my rotary cutter. I ripped out the gathering stitches and decided to pleat it instead, like I did the skirt. Pleating the chiffon was so fiddly, but I then I managed it. I also basted these pleats down. I then tried on the skirt and marked the hem, chopping off the excess. To finish off the overlay, I cut out some strips of the satin to make some tape to bind the edges of the chiffon. This was actually cut from the excess I had cut from the skirt hem. I then measured my chiffon to see how much tape I would need.
I pin and sew the strips together, then I iron the long strip in half and then one long edge inwards by half an inch. I then pinned the long edge that was not ironed to the chiffon, right sides facing each other, and sewed it onto the edge of the skirt hem with a half an inch seam allowance. The interest, interest point is at the front of the skirt, where there are two slits in the overlay. I did this by simply cutting the chiffon and then measuring the corners to the best of my ability when applying the tape. Hand sew the other edge with a whip stitch. I sewed up the back seam and took this opportunity to secure the pleats by stitching over them. I was afraid the basting might come apart and I'd have to pleat the freaking chiffon all over again. I also flat fell this seam by hand. I decided to go ahead and hem the skirt before adding the overlay as it was already hard to maneuver the lump of fabric. I left quite a large hem on this as I hoped the extra fabric would help give some body to the hem. I folded it inwards then turned the top edge inwards by half an inch. I pinned it and sewed it down with a herringbone stitch. I moved on to making the waistband. This is just my waist measurement with seam allowance by the double desired width plus seam allowance. I wanted a 1 inch wide waistband to try and reduce bulk at the waistline. I cut it out of the satin and out of cotton organdy to use as interfacing. I then hand basted it onto the satin. Now somehow my measurements went wrong and I accidentally made the waistband too short. I decided to cut a small rectangle of the satin and piece it on. It's not just laziness guys, piecing is period. Piecing is period. I pieced it on and then sewed the edges of the waistband together. I 
pin the top of the skirt to the overlay and basted it. Then I pinned on the waistband and basted it again. And then sew them all in one go by machine. I trimmed off the seam as it was super bulky. I then flipped the waistband over, tucked the half an inch seam allowance inwards and hand sewed it down. For the flower decorations, I followed an online tutorial to make small flowers. I made two square templates and cut them out of spare ivory satin I had. These are then folded in a tricky way and ironed. Then I cut an odd shape out of them and voila, a flower shape. Then I got three different sizes of coins and marked the shapes in the centre, which I used as a guide to sew a row of gathering stitches. I gather these up and secure them, doing this for every layer. Then the layers are stacked and secured together by hand sewing. I very gently held the edge of the flowers to a flame to seal the edges of the satin. Don't try this at home, it's actually quite reckless and I do not recommend. Just use fray check or something. I hand sewed some leaves onto the flowers and then decided on the arrangement of the flowers on the dress. These were hand sewn in place. And that was it. I had quite a lot of fun making this dress and experiencing a new 19th century decade. I'm quite happy with the outcome, except for the wrinkly bodice. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.